All right, everybody, welcome back to another Angular tutorial video. Yay, I know you guys are, are screaming out in joy. You're ready for this. And today's probably gonna be a longer one, and I think it'll be really fun, really beneficial for you guys. So I do hope you stick through all of this. And if you're new to this series, we've started doing the Angular Tour of Heroes tutorial from start to in the future finish. And this is a good tutorial for people getting started with Angular. I just started learning Angular not too long ago and thought, you know, while I'm learning it, why not share it with you guys? And that's what this uh, series has been about. And if you like this kind of stuff, don't forget to hit subscribe. We're getting close to 700. Really, we're getting closer to 1,000, which is my ultimate goal right now. And I uh, really appreciate it, those of you that have subbed. And if you're wanting to follow along, I have turned this series into a playlist here on YouTube so you can check it out from start to finish. And where we left off, let's remind ourselves where we left off. Here is our application so far. So we have this hero list, which is just hard-coded values of a bunch of heroes. And then we have this hero list component. And then in the last video, we talked about separating uh, the hero list from the hero detail. So down here is another component that's hidden right now with the ngif directive because we haven't selected anything. And we also added styling. Whenever I click on a particular hero, it automatically and dynamically styles it based on a condition that the selected hero is the one that gets that styling. So here is the separate component. And now this pretty much is based of two components. We have the hero list component and then the hero details component. And today we're gonna to talk about services and create a service, why we're going to use a service and talk about dependency injection, which might sound scary, but I think you guys will get the hang of it. Um, so it should be fun. So first off, we're gonna create a service and you might be asking why bother creating a service. And it's really because a component should only care about displaying the data, not retrieving the data, validating the data, all that good stuff. It should just get the data and then display it in the HTML. And so we're gonna have a service which you can think of as a middleman hosting that data. And maybe it's you know going to call an API saying, give me this data, it'll retrieve it from the API and then send it to the components that need it to display it. So you can think of it as a place for all your logic to go. So, so in this video, we're going to create the service and we're also going to implement dependency injection. And dependency injection is a fancy word in Angular for adding services, which is what we're going to create, into a class that depends on that service and is going to use that service. And in our case, we're going to inject or give a service that is shared amongst many classes. And so they can all use the same service and not have to worry about creating it from scratch. And hopefully that'll make more sense once we get into it. Um, so let's go ahead and let's go ahead and create the service and that'll be the first thing that we do and we're going to call this the hero service so i think i'm actually going to close all of our tabs kind of make this look a little cleaner and then on the left i just minimize the hero detail component and the heroes component and then i'm going to if you don't have the terminal already up um, which i'm assuming you do if you you know served it up and are looking at it just hit this plus and we'll create a, a new terminal instance. And here we're just going to cd to the tour of heroes project and then run the command. Well, actually we need to also go to source and then app. And then we're going to run the command ng generate s for service before we did c for component. So we're gonna do s for service and then whatever we're going to name it and we're gonna name it hero. And what this will do is it'll create two files. One will be for testing, one TypeScript file for testing, and one is just the service. And the testing one over here, I'm just going to delete because we're not going to use it. And now we have this hero service TypeScript file. And this is like the naming convention that it'll give it. It'll be the name.service.ts for TypeScript file. And this is the base of what it provides when we create this service. So we have this injectable declarator above the class. And this is just providing some metadata saying that this uh, class is injectable into other classes, meaning we're going to give this class to other classes to use and share. And here's where we can write functions and stuff to call APIs and get data and anything else we might desire to do. 
And in our case, we're not going to call an API because that would require us to build an API. Maybe we'll do that in the future, and I hope to plan to, to do that in the future. But we're just going to continue what we have been doing and use this mock heroes hero array just to provide some hard-coded data and kind of act like we are calling an API. So at the top, I'm just going to import uh, hero. And then we're also going to import why did I add a period? We're also going to import that hero array heroes. And that way we can use this um, when we create a function called or a method called get heroes. So below our constructor, let's create that method called get heroes. And it's going to return a hero hero array. And then all it's going to do is return heroes, right? It's those hard-coded values that we created because we're not calling anything to give us data. We're just going to reuse the mock heroes, heroes. So let's talk about the injectable again. Let's re revisit this. And inside of this metadata, you'll notice that it added provided in root. And root is what is known as a provider. And a provider is something that creates the initial instance of this service, for example, and distributes it and injects it into other classes. And Angular has a good definition in the tutorial, which by the way, I'll link it down below if you wanna read through all of this again. But it says, when you provide the service at the root level, like it does, provided in root, Angular creates a single shared instance of the service and injects it into any class that asks for it. And that's powerful because these different components, they don't have to know about each other, but they can all use the same single shared instance of the service, for example. So they can all use this hero's data as it's injected, which is pretty powerful. So that's all we're going to do so far in this hero service TypeScript. Let's go back to the heroes component TypeScript. So now we're in our heroes component TypeScript, and I just want to import that hero service because we're going to inject it into this uh, into this component and then use it to retrieve that data. And so here, we're no longer going to set that equal to heroes. This is where we're going to use the service to set this value for us. So it's going to be of type hero and then an array. And then at the very beginning, we're just going to make it an empty array. Okay, and now we want to inject it into this components constructor, and that's where you'll do the injection. So we'll make a private variable passed into the constructor, and we can call it hero service with a lowercase h, and it's gonna be of type hero service. And now whenever we want to use this hero service, we can just reference this dot hero service, and in our case, we're going to use that get heroes method and utilize it that way. So now let's create a method here called get heroes and it's not going to return anything. And all it's going to do is it's going to set this dot heroes. So this property right here, that is currently nothing equal to hero service dot get heroes. Just like that. So we're setting this heroes equal to whatever he get heroes is going to return in the hero service. And like I said, in our case, it's just going to be all of these hard coded values. And now lastly, we need to call this method that we created. And we're going to do that on the ng on init, which is just going to run everything in here whenever this component is initialized. So here we'll just say this dot get heroes and it'll run this particular method. Now, if we wanted to, we could say, um, we could just copy all of this here and just paste it right here. But the tutorial likes us to kind of separate these things. So it's going to create this method called get heroes, which then calls the uh, get heroes in the service and sets that value to the heroes in this class. And we're going to call that on the ng on init. And now if we save that everything Let's make sure it compiled okay. Yep, everything should be just as it was. It should work just as it was. 
and uh, we shouldn't even notice a change just running the application. So let's select. And I guess we didn't even need to select. The fact that all these heroes are listed out tells us that it works because now these heroes are coming from that service and we're no longer setting it right here, right? So every time we refresh, it uses that shared service to grab all of the heroes and then set heroes equal to um, whatever the hero service dot get heroes returns. So hopefully that makes sense. Kind of a, you know, a little bit convoluted concept maybe at first, but really we're just separating the concerns between the heroes component and the hero service, which is doing the heavy lifting while the component is just, you know, displaying that data. Okay, and that's all we're going to do in this video. It looks like in the next video, we're actually going to set this up for calling an API. And I'm not sure, I didn't look very far ahead in this tutorial. I'm not sure if we're actually calling an API in the future. It looks like we might. Um, so that would probably be a good experience to get to learn too, because that's what you'll likely be doing in the real world, right? We won't have these hard-coded values and calling an API is a little bit different. We need to set things up a little bit differently just because of the nature of, you know, making a request and then getting that data back from a server. So we're going to set it up in the next video to be able to do that and facilitate that. And uh, hopefully you guys are looking forward to that too. And hopefully this makes sense. So thanks again for watching, guys. Hope to see you in the next one and take care.